This week on VAP Access, we're coming to you from the Swanky B Club. This is where it's happening every single day of the week. Now you know. I'm about to interview a personal friend of mine, an artist who I've been working with for about two years. I'm very proud to call myself her publicist. Her musical journey started in the UK, where she was picked and mentored by Matthew Knowles, Beyonce's dad, for those who know, and she would later return to Africa, where she eventually found her own. Today, she's renowned and celebrated as one of the most gifted, amazing power vocalists. I'm speaking about none other than Shay Shay. Hello, Shay. Hello, Aniko. I'm fine. Nice to see you. You too. You look so beautiful as always. You look so beautiful and skinny as always. No no arms. That's you know how we do. So what is the secret to um, this beautiful face, um, the style that you keep up with? Every time I see Shay on a music video in person, you're always looking really amazing. I just, I just um, do me, I dress uh, how I feel, and most of the time I'm happy, so I dress happily, and if I'm, dressing, if I'm looking rough, then you know something's wrong with Shay, you know, but I just stay in my own lane, and I don't try and be something I'm not. This is your second time um, in Kenya, and um, I'm not sure if it's the official second time, but it's the second time to do a media tour in Kenya. And um, you're one artist who travels a lot, you know, from Lagos to London to Tanzania, Uganda to Kenya. So I wanted to ask you, where do you feel like this is home? And how does your travel inspire you as an artist? Well, you're right. I hear that I travel a lot, a lot. But I don't feel like I travel as much as other artists, to be honest. But where I call home is definitely Nigeria. Um, I was born in the UK. But my second home is Nairobi. That's why they call me Njeri. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, I feel like, you know, traveling inspires my music a lot. I get to meet different producers, songwriters, you know, the environments really affect my mood um, and generally helps me create great music. You were born in the UK and you, you know, had a fair share of your growing up and, you know, starting your music career in the UK. You know, tell me about being in the group From Above. Tell me about how you ended up being picked up and mentored by Beyonce's dad, Matthew Knowles. You know, how did that um, mold the artist that you are today? Well, I started singing from a very young age. Um, I used to follow my mom to choir practice. I used to be in my school choir, my church choir, with the Hillsong um, Frontline Choir. And I think Hillsong was really the place I really experienced being in on that stage with the whole technical side of stage performance because, you know, because of that whole vibe and that whole uh, setup that they have. Um, and then as I entered university and kept on going, you know, into music more, I, um, I joined a girl group called From Above. And From Above were five, five of us, two white girls, one mixed race girl, one Mauritian girl, and one black girl. And we used to rehearse and sing in different spots and places. And then our manager at the time was looking for a, a deal for us. And I don't know how, but he came across Matthew Knowles and invited Matthew Knowles to come and hear us sing. So when Matthew Knowles came to hear us sing, he said that we reminded him of the early Destiny's Child. And so that was kind of how we got picked up by him, taken to America, and the rest is history. Many people would think that after that, you know, you would have made it, but you still felt like there's something else you wanted to do. You still felt like there's another continent I want to conquer. So tell me about the journey of relocating, you know, from the UK, your other home to your other home, which was Nigeria. You know, was that difficult? And did you kind of struggle with, you know, settling back in Nigeria? From above, broke up. They wanted to, we wanted to break up. We were no longer happy. We were no longer, you know, feeling patient. Um, and so we broke up and I decided to move to Nigeria because I remember my mom before she died saying, hey, you're gonna end up in Nigeria doing music. And I thought it was a bit odd for her to say that, but you know, now I know it was a premonition. And um, the transition back to Nigeria was, was, was cool for me. I had Sound Sultan as my musical godfather. I had Cecil Hammond from Flight Time as my, as my um, 
promotional company and then I had Deola at Alade of LifeSpot as my, you know, my mentor, my label, everything. So I had like really three powerhouses really just behind me. So settling in to Nigeria was kind of easy. I feel like um, growing in the industry and staying consistent and evolving was the hard part. We got to know about you, um, especially in East Africa and Kenya, with the song you did with Paturanki Murder. That was about four years ago. And from then onwards, it's been a slew of hits from Shay, you know, from Yolo Yolo to Bia to Right Now to Comeroll to Gimme. So tell me about how you chant the music. Well, you know, Right Now and Murder, I know, were very big here. And I remember doing a couple of shows out here and, and actually just like, I mean, you, you're privy to that because, you know, you were with me. But I remember doing a couple of shows out here and, and the crowd singing the song back and everything. And it was interesting because I didn't realize that I was that known in East Africa. But I am and I'm really grateful for that. And unfortunately, I've taken a bit of time out, um, not on purpose, but because of just life and certain things, you know, trying to expand the team and stuff. Um, but... Since then, since then, I've dropped Yolo Yolo, I've dropped Komaro featuring an East African, Harmonize, and Give Me Love featuring Runtown, who is huge. And those two songs are out right now, so they can go and, you know, go, go and watch, go and watch it, go and watch it, and tell me what you think. And, and yes, I do have a songwriter. I have songwriters, but I have one particular songwriter called Ace Tune, who's also an artist. And um, he is so talented, and he, you know, he um, wrote Komaro and... Um, couple of other records and uh, he's coming up really fast. In 2017 you actually headlined at Blankets and Wine Uganda. You know it was such a surreal experience to see all the Ugandans sing your songs word for word and um, you know since then you've released the Comoral song with Harmonize, you also there's Yanje with um, Omi Dimples. What are other um, East African plans you have for more recording? I really enjoy collaborating with East African artists particularly because they kind of get they get my style of music right melodically they're there vocally they're there yeah like definitely um, Yanje with Omi Dimples such a soulful melodic song my style you know my tempo um love you scatter with vanessa md and um dj cuppy um again you know talks about love mid-tempo um komaro with harmonize however is a different vibe altogether but um i'm glad i went there because it seems to be a hit out here a hit back home in nigeria so i'm really excited about it the video is a bit sexy and naughty so you gotta like hide your kids and your husbands uh, but <laughs> you know um it's, it's it's just a vibe i feel like um i feel like the east africans got it they really got it yeah if you had to pick um one city to spend a week in and um you know do the things you love the most what would you pick between nairobi kampala lagos and london that's not fair so, Aniko, to answer your question, um, actually, I would not pick any. I would go to Zanzibar instead with um, my loved ones or loved one and, you know, do some crazy things and just relax, chill. Speaking of loved ones, you know, for somebody who writes a lot of songs, I would imagine there's a lot of um, secret admirers um, and even some peers in the industry who, you know, want to have a little bit of that sugar and how do you handle that you're so cute though um you know guys will be guys and i feel like definitely in the industry everybody's always hooking up with everybody because like we we're the only we know each other and we're used to each other and we understand each other so it's like you know i guess everybody's had a bit of a fling here or there i guess i guess i don't know but you know it's it's interesting because like being a female artist and being popular a lot of guys like try to slide in the dm or a lot of guys want to you know i i have to belong to everybody right so i don't really put my my love life my business out there when it comes to my personal relationships because i cannot be one person's I have to be everybody's yeah so if the minute you know i start to become attached to like one guy like oh what about what happens to all my millions of boyfriends that are following me they're gonna be jealous and i don't want them to be jealous i love you all however um i feel that it's really important to like just keep your private life private and um yeah
I have to first applaud you for how you've handled yourself as an artist, as a brand, as a lady, as a leading power vocalist in Africa. I know it, it must not be so easy because you don't see a lot of women um, on top. You know, you don't see a lot of women with their songs chatting stations or performing or traveling and being independent as you are, you know. So how do you manage to do that? I mean, look, I always complain to you, like, you know, and you come, money, the money, you know. Um, um, it's not easy. I have been independent since inception of Shay Shay. Um, and I, you know, make money from shows, endorsements, streaming, and then I reinvest a big chunk of it back into my brands, which is what I used to pay for most of my overheads and things that I, I have to do. Um, you know, God has been good. I've been very blessed. I haven't had to compromise myself in any real, in any you know detrimental way i'm quite proud of myself for that but you know like hustle is a hustle like you got to do what you got to do but for me like i feel like the music the talent the consistency speaks will speak for itself and you know i'm like a slow and steady kind of gal what's next for shay shay following electric package volume one um i'm working on um volume two and the sound is a bit more international um yeah, I'm still going to have features on it because I think features are a really good strategic way to like, you know, get yourself out there. But it's going to be a lot more um, musical. Anything you might want to say even maybe to your fans who are watching from across Africa? This year, the EP, second EP drops and I hope to win loads of awards this year and encourage your sister, you know, and encourage yourselves as well by, you know, supporting good causes um yeah follow me on my social media um and my music is out right now on every platform any platform that you buy music on it's there shayi shay yeah now what more can i say after that schooling thank you so much me and shayi are finishing off and uh, thank you so much for watching please subscribe to my youtube and uh, follow shayi's music right now we're jamming to come and give me love continue to spread love ciao